So, so you can put this on a gem, right? You put this. On this is gym. this is for the binos. That's for the binos. Does the scope have a different attachment? Uh, I'll show you. There are. Uh, got on the scope, right? Like that. This oh, the handle. My, my six inch Apo has got this on here. This thing weighs a ton. Yeah. So think about removing that. This is heavier, but not much more. You feel these too. They're like almost close. Uh, so what you'll do is you'll have this on the scope. And then when you get it out of the case, you're going to grab it like this to get the, to get the scope out. There's a uh, Telescope is in the case. Yep. You'll grab the scope. You'll yep. pick it up. You'll put your hand in there. And you're going to be able to hold it like this in one hand underneath. Uh, to mount the scope. To get you in the perfect fulcrum point to where you're not going to have too much weight. Yep. 30 pound scope's not going to feel like anything. And Think about it, it's the biggest drawback. It's the picking up the It's the biggest drawback in astronomy besides pollution, light pollution. Because people want to observe, if they don't have an observatory, they're going to have to set the thing up. Yeah, they, all the time. They cringe about having to set the thing up. At least, at least have it easier to at least get the thing out of the case. Yeah. And then up on the map. And just tighten it down. Good to go while it's up there. You'll just remove these. Come right up. Very carefully. Slide this guy right out of there. It's got to be a real tight fit because of the uh, necessary tolerances to get the bino not offline. You know, it's got to, everything's got to be pretty tight. Because what you'll do next, if you're on a, if you're on a uh, equatorial, yep. Apple, excuse me, all as. If you're on all as, you'll be back here. You got your vinyl viewer right here, so you're looking in. So there's no more of this mountain binoculars like right over the scope. Okay. I don't know how, I don't know how that people do have that work in it, but it's fine. You'll have it right there. You'll put this guy right here. Right That'll be on a pretty heavy. Uh, so you could—that's the mount. Other stuff on top of the scope, like where the handle is. Your non-quarter twenty binoculars, any pair that you got. Yeah. It's gonna go right on here. Sit right on there. You're gonna gear tie. And this is goes where the handle is. Gear tie that on there. Yeah, okay. With with uh, two of them. One of them wraps around here first. Yeah. You loop it through and come around here. You get a you got like six, seven inches up here to work with and you just crank her down. Yep. It's not going anywhere. Oh, you'll put this little guy. Wait, what? You put this little guy on the back of here so that, that this is not coming off. It'll help uh, stabilize the the front and then you'll put the, that loop back here because this is higher and you'll be able to make that loop. Cool. Thanks so much. Yeah. Well, thanks for the demonstration. Well I'm not this is just getting going. So you'll flip this over. Now you're putting some 1570s in there through the quarter 20 hole. Okay. If you got a good mount it's not gonna need any uh, additional counterweight on the other side yeah, unless you've got real small weight you know you could put some ankle weights over here or something yep. if you're if you're uh, concerned about it but it should be fine and you just mount it right there you take your knob that's on the front that was on the front right here you're gonna take your knob yep you're gonna put that right through there and you're just gonna put your seven Go 
right through there. Okay. Right and you're going to be good to go. Cool. That's, so you're, you're going to be able And you don't need a... With the binoculars that heavy, you don't need a counterweight on that side with this mounted to the, with this mounted to the scope. Uh, not so much. Okay. Yeah, not so much. Um, as long as it's uh, as long as it's in the, it's in the all that is. You're, you're, you might need to put an ankle weight over here if, if you're concerned about it, but okay, uh, it should be it should be fine just like that. And, and that's still mounted with the pin, the cotter pin or whatever. Yep, it's mounted with this one. Going anywhere. There's, yeah, a, that. there's a little press fit in here, and that no tool is required. You just press that right in, and you're good to go for that one. For the is there any other additional? We are setup? just beginning to talk about this. Uh, oh, really? What I'm going to do, I to avoid going crazy, showing everyone how this works. Yeah. I better do a good demonstration for like everybody every half hour maybe. I don't know. Not sure what to do yet. But it does a lot of things. We are changing the way we mount a telescope forever. We are changing the way we observe forever by using comparative observation, by looking through the binoculars, getting the essence of the in, of the uh, target of the object. And then you're able to go instantly to the telescopic image to study details. And by using both of those at almost the same time, your brain loves that context that it has to work with, where it's trying to find what's in each one. Yes. So when you try to find what's in each one, subconsciously, when you find it, details are just going to start popping out more than usual. And that's how it goes. Cool. There you go. Thanks. Uh, hey, you're welcome, Daniel. So, let's go with, let's go with, for the first time ever, the German Equatorial. So, how are we going to do that? What we're going to do is we're going to mount this guy like this. This is either going to sit like that. Yep. Attract this guy. Go on this way, right? And what's on there? Okay. That's, on, that's still either, on the scope? Binoculars. Okay. On here. You're going to have this guy either mounted like this. Yep. Swap this around. And that's mounted just straight to the uh, to, to the gem, not straight not to, to the, the scope. Yeah. Straight to the gem. And you're gonna go this way for your quarter twenty. Oh, for the. You're gonna mount this guy right there, like that. Yeah. All you need to do. And that mounts straight to the gem. Oh, you can put a dove, dovetail on that. Yeah. Yep, yeah, and you'll just extend your counterweights, or maybe yeah. buy an extra one if you start mounting this guy on a small mount. Okay. Buy an extra counterweight, and then it'll it'll get over. So that's that one. What you'll do then on the front, you'll mount it this way. So now you got one going this way. You got one going this way. You have a matrix of different positions. <laughs> <laughs> so now this way, you've got your 1570s in there. You've got your phone mounted up here. For your app. For your app. You open your Sky Safari. Yeah. You got your binoculars ready to go here. You can also mount a uh, sky chart. Get, get one of your maps uh, mounted up. You can just kind of hang it right down here. Or, uh, or a laser. I'd put a laser on there. I like lasers. Yeah, yeah, you can put a laser on there. You can put a. Uh, you can put anything you want on here. Whatever will fit. Here's, uh, here's our main going to have your Rigel finder on there. Yes. If you got a big enough scope, uh, I've got a six inch refractor. I have the Telrad base like right back here. Yeah, okay. So I don't really use this, but I just put this on here for people with smaller scopes. We'll uh, need the Rigel finder. They can put it there. If you've got the optical tube and see like a TV85, something like that, you're going to be like right here and the focus room will be right here. So you don't have any other room to mount one of these finders, so there it is. Be ready to go. Yeah, and then the Rigel finder sticks up high enough. 
the Rigel finder sticks up high enough that it goes goes over the. It goes over that piece. For yeah, sure. over the piece. It'll go right over. It. Cool. So you've got your phone. You've got a star chart. You got your binoculars, and hopefully you've got a vino viewer back here. So you got both eyes going and both scopes. Uh, you can have the 3D uh, LOA that Russ makes. You can have the 3D eyepieces that Russ makes for the vino viewer. You got a full 3D scope with your Sky Safari and map, plus the mounting ability of the scope. Okay, cool. All right, Dale. <laughs>